Since the 1950s, every ejection seat in the Air Force has been safety tested in a special facility. This rocket and aerospace test facility provides a control environment for testing high-speed systems, and it does that using rocket-propelled sleds moving at hundreds to thousands of miles per hour. Originally built in 1949, the Holloman High Speed Test Track, or HHSTT for short, is located in the state of New Mexico, and they test anything from aircraft crew escape systems to rain and particle erosion tests, impact testing, weapons dispensing, and so on. But even before the Holloman Test Track was built, there were already other test facilities like NASA Langley Research Center that were conducting tests on human subjects, like the air blast testing at increasing speeds. As you can see, even the test subject couldn't quite keep a straight face, so they kept cranking up the wind until he did. Very cheeky. So if you're wondering whether they ever strapped a person to those high-speed sleds at Holloman, you're goddamn right they did. It was the 50s and the mastermind behind those human sled tests knew one or two things about Murphy's Law. But it's not what you think. The most prominent feature of the facility is the rail system, used for launching rocket-powered test vehicles known as sleds. There are three rails, A, B, and C. Rails A and B are 7 feet apart and over 9.5 miles long. Track C is under 4 miles long, and over time, these tracks have been extended multiple times. Now, the rails may look like your typical railroad tracks, but there is something very unique about them. They are the straightest system of tracks ever laid down. The sleds have to be aligned within a few thousandths of an inch. Just imagine hitting the slightest speed bumps at hypersonic speeds. So how fast do these test vehicles go? They reach speeds of up to 7,000 feet per second on a regular basis. But how fast can they go? Well, that's an entirely different question. In 2003, the Holloman High Speed Test Track set and still holds the world's land speed record for rocket sleds at 9,465 feet per second. That's over 8 times the speed of sound and more than 2 times faster than the fastest rifle bullet. And this is what it looked like. One, zero, fire. Don't worry, we got another angle of it, but don't blink or you'll miss it. It is also neat how these super fast sleds are slowed down to come to a quick stop. Instead of complicated hydraulics, they use water brakes using a technique called momentum exchange. Toward the end of the tracks, between the rails, there are compartments filled with water. As the sled goes over the water, a large steel scoop breaks through the barriers, picks up the water and reverses its direction 180 degrees. This braking technique is used for dual rail sleds. For monorails, tubes of water, known as water sausages, are used, which break open when the sled goes over them. By the way, no one has yet got a speeding ticket on these tracks, for one reason they are still moving below the speed limit. Depending on the type of the test, the weight of the sled can range from 100 to 30,000 pounds, and depending on the payload size, accelerations above 200 G have been demonstrated. There are over 100 different types of sleds available, ranging from small high-velocity monorails to massive dual-rail sleds. The size, shape, weight, and the frontal area of the payload is very important in determining which sled type and propulsion system should be used. Within the facility, there is a 6,000-foot rain field, equipped with adjustable spray heads that can generate variable droplet sizes and various rain rates of up to 24 inches per hour. As the sled travels through the rain field, the erosive effects caused by the impact of the raindrops on material samples or components of weapon systems carried on the rocket sleds can be studied. In addition to the track and the sleds, there are tens of camera stations, which record time-distance data for each run. There are also cameras on the sleds. Who doesn't like those nice POV shots, right? Back in the early 1950s, the initial tests were only performed on equipment, but soon included human tolerance testing under the command of U.S. Air Force officer John Paul Stapp, who was also a physician, had a PhD in biophysics, 
and was a pioneer in studying the effects of acceleration and deceleration forces on humans. Stapp understood the importance of studying rapid deceleration as it related to space travel. For example, how to keep astronauts safe by properly restraining them when going from orbiting the Earth at thousands of miles per hour to a rapid slowdown when entering the atmosphere. So you see where this research is headed. But who would volunteer for such unprecedented experiments? Well, Stapp stepped in himself and was the test subject of numerous deceleration experiments during which he experienced bruising, ruptured eardrums, broken ribs, and even lost his tooth fillings. Eventually, the Air Force decided to pull the plug on these human experiments, but not before Stapp went in for one last ride. On December 10, 1954, John Stapp rode a sled powered by nine rocket engines that propelled him faster than a 45 caliber bullet. The sled reached a maximum speed of 639 miles per hour before slamming into a stop in less than 1.4 seconds. Just imagine what his body must have gone through. The crew ran over to check on Stapp and he was quickly put into an ambulance and taken to a hospital for examination. His eyes had hemorrhaged so badly from the extreme deceleration that he was unable to see, but luckily regained his full vision within a couple of weeks. In an interview, Stapp described his last sled ride as being assaulted in the rear by a fast freight train. I don't know about you, but I like it when people use technical terms like that. Shortly after, Stapp was named the fastest man on Earth by Time magazine. By riding the decelerator sled in his 29th and last ride at Holloman Air Force Base, Stapp demonstrated that with adequate harnessing, a human can withstand at least 46.2 negative G in the forward position. This is the highest known deceleration encountered by a human voluntarily. Colonel John Stapp was the first, last and the only human being to ride the high-speed rocket sleds of Holloman. He passed away while asleep at home in 1999. He was 89 years old. Not only these tests paved the way for future crew survival testing, they were also the origin for many more safety systems, including the lap and shoulder seat belts used in automobiles today. Prior to working at Holloman, Stapp was performing similar experiments at the Edwards Air Force Base. During that time, he crossed paths with Lieutenant Edward Murphy who had developed some new sensors, and Stapp was interested in utilizing them on the sleds. But after the sled run, the sensors showed no reading, and upon investigation, it turned out they were mounted backwards, all 16 of them. Frustrated with the situation, Lieutenant Murphy allegedly blamed the problem on the assistants, saying, if there is any way they can do it wrong, they will. And those words stuck among the group. Sometime after, during a press conference, Stapp mentioned that the reason no one had been seriously injured during the sled tests is because they always took Murphy's Law into account, and then had to elaborate, as no one knew at the time what he meant by that. John Paul Stapp is credited with being the popularizer, as well as the author of the final form of what is known today as Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong, will go wrong. But by surviving the extreme experiments that Stapp performed on himself, it looks like the only person immune to Murphy's Law was the legend himself. By the way, there is still some room left in our 69 Club on Patreon. Check out the video description. It's not what you think.